what up this a new episode right here this will be volume two of my classic material you know what i'm saying this series right here is where i break down some of the standout tracks from one of the most illest and influential classic hip-hop albums that came out the 80s and the 90s you know what i'm saying y'all gosh know that i did a classic material on ice cubes first album america's most wanted which came out back in 1990 classic album right there so this time on the second episode i'm about to break down some of the standout tracks from probably one of my all-time favorite hip-hop albums to come out the 80s you know what i'm saying and this album definitely played a big part of my life i remember hearing this album when i was like you know six seven years old i just fell in love with this ever since then you know what i'm saying i'm gonna really talk about all my real hip-hop heads you must know dope about this genre right here i'm gonna talk about biz Markie's first debut album going off released in 1988 in my opinion this is one of the best albums to come out the cold chilling discography in my opinion y'all gosh must know who biz Markey is in my opinion he's one of the most influential hip-hop artists of all time i mean the dude is a fucking pioneer he's very underrated you know the clown prince of hip-hop you know what i'm saying like known for his beatboxing i mean like musk goes up musk come down musk goes up musk come down you know what i'm saying like i try my best to do it but you know it is what it is because I, I usually beatbox every once in a while but it ain't my thing so you know biz Markey, you know spits rhymes he beatboxes and he also a dj as well shout out to biz he's still doing his thing and believe it or not y'all um last year I actually saw Biz Markey live in concert. Yeah, true story. He came to Philly, you know what I'm saying, at the Ben Franklin Parkway. I saw him on stage, you know what I mean? He wasn't on stage that long, you know what I'm saying, but got a chance to see him, you know what I'm saying? And um, I wanted to take a picture of him, but it was fucking too crowded as shit down there. But, you know, Biz Markey as a person, he seemed like, so, he seemed like a cool cat to chill with, you know what I mean? So, I'm about to really talk about, you know, some of the, my, some of the best songs from this hip hop classic that Biz Markey put out his first debut album, you no, know, going off was come out back in 1988. You no, know, 1988 in my opinion was like my favorite year of the 80s. You know, what I'm saying like 88 came out with some mad motherfucking heat, like N.W.A. Shred Out Compton, you know, Public Enemies had takes nations of millions toward his back. I mean, uh, fucking, you know, boogie down productions by all means necessary. I mean, timeless shit. Eric B and Rock Kim's final leader. Big Daddy Kane's long live the king. I mean like Jungle Brothers was straight out of the jungle. I mean 88 was fucking hot. So this album is one of them. You know what I'm saying? So let's read it. You know what I'm shall we? Post 80s rappers have had it pretty easy back in the days. MCs have to pave their own way and no one should show that more than the diabolical best marquee. Biz was every man, the class clown, the guy in the corner who had to work extra harder to get hurt. Marcel Hall, aka Biz Markey, was born in Harlem and moved to Brentwood, Long Island at the age 10, where he began um, owning his MC skills in 1978. After enlisting his way black friend slash vocalist TJ Swan and his cousin DJ Cool V and future Juice Crew star Big Daddy King, who Biz Markey met at Sarah J. Hale High School in Brooklyn, New York. Biz then had his sights on being down with the Queens break the Queens based production kingpin Marley Marl. He enabled into the Juice crew through Roxanne Shantae. At the time in nineteen eighty five, I was Shantae's beatbox. I would go out to perform with her and do all her records doing human beatboxing. Soon thereafter, Biz had a hit on his hands for Marley Marl in an or in human orchestra ep um which prism which included the legendary tracks make your music with your mouth biz you know with the singles rebel courses hook song by you know tj swan in the biz dance the ep was loose and godly showcasing business sense of humor as well as his rapping and unique beatboxing skills 1987 was a busy 
spent year was a busy year spent performing guessing on other people's records releasing his smash hit nobody beats the biz and single and working on his debut classic going off the album hit in february 1988 it began the 1988-1989 ruling of marley Merle's juice crew syndicate this explains the album's success plain and simple it was easy because I had the funk and I knew that I wanted out the album. I'm a simple person. If the beat is funky some, with something on top, then that's it. That's all I need. I'm the diabolical. On one shed some light on his favorite cuts. If you hear the noise in the background, um, that's my air conditioner. I'm kind of hot in here, so, you know, it is what it is. So, as the diabolical Biz Marquis break down some of his favorite songs for this album, here we go. Picking boogers, y'all guys must know about the song. You know, the song talking about digging up your fucking nose and shit. If you have a booger and stuff like that, um, this is what Big um Biz said about the track about picking boogers. I just wanted to do a record because I knew a lot of people that used to pick boogers. Wow, that's crazy. Alby Square Mall. I went to Alby Square Mall in Brooklyn every day. I used to get food for free close on credit and that was just before the song after the song i paid for everything because i had money then vocalist and friend tj swan's great on that track but i think nobody beats the biz is his best song return of the biz dance that was different from the original biz dance from the human orchestra ep the beat that marley did was so funky that i want to do a rhyme to it so i did another biz dance track that's cool man probably one of my favorite songs of this fucking album right here and that is vapors oh my god that song right there that is my shit i mean that beat that james brown sample this storytelling is fucking ahead of its time you know what i'm saying so this is what biz said about the track vapors i wrote that song so i will be like rod sterling how he had different stories like on the twilight zone I wanted to show four different lives. I wanted to show the good and the bad of in those lives. Every single thing on that song was true. You know, Biz Marquis, he was talking about some girl that I used to um met when he was um, coming up. He also talking about how big Daddy Kane, you know, came up before he was rhyming. You know, his cousin, you know, Cool V and TJ Swan. I mean, good storytelling, you know what I'm saying? You could actually he could tell y'all what was going on in lives before they started being successful. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was Vapors right there. Make the music with your mouth, biz. Marley did a remix for the song on the album on the original. I don't know why he did that. I wasn't there for the mastering of the album. I wanted the original on the album, not that version. Wow, that's fucking crazy though. I haven't heard that before. Well, I never heard that about. I never even know that. Um. Biz wanted that version on the album, but that version is a fucking classic. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? Nobody beats the Biz. That's a remix. I don't know why I did that either. I bought that into Steve Miller sample because I knew rock. I wanted to do just a Steve Miller, but Marley had the Lafayette Afro Rock band sample for the, the drum beat. This is something for the radio. Fucking love that song as well. It was like 4 a.m. when I did that. I just wanted to act like I was drunk. They recorded it while I was playing around. And after I heard it, I said, keep it. Wow, damn. See, this is what I like about Biz Marquis. He just don't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was just, you know, put out anything that would be fucking dope. That would be so good for people to check out, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a very dope song, you know what I mean? Definitely, that's like one of my favorites off the album as well. And Cool V... Cool V's tribute to scratching. We had a record called Cool V versus Scratch. Um, so Scratch a piece, something like that. I don't. I can't see the fucking titles and shit. But anyways, that was supposed to go on the album with all Michael Jackson records, but it never made the album. It's incredible that Michael Jackson wouldn't clear the stuff. Wow, wouldn't clear the samples and shit. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was like the standout tracks from going off you know what i'm saying this is broke you know biz just broke down some of the classic songs from some of the clap the, the the fucking hip-hop classic you know what i mean like a very amazing debut album for his time 
No, the production is on point. Biz Marky's sense of humor is fucking you no know, out of this world. His beatboxing, his rhyming skills. I mean, Biz, he is very fucking funny. I have to say that. I mean, he's hilarious. In my opinion, like I said, he never really got the props that he deserved. You know what I'm saying? I always felt like Biz was very underrated. You know what I'm saying? It was like, this is the album that every hip hop head should must know about. So, yeah, fucking classic. So this is Biz Marky going off, released in 1988. If you're a fan of you know, Biz Marky, if you're a fan of early 90s hip hop, that old school hip hop, fan of you know, Juice Crew, Marley Marl, Cold Chillin', fan of beatboxing, this down for you. So this is Biz Marky going off 1988 hip hop classic. So, yep, that was it for classic material, volume two. Hope y'all enjoy it. Salute.